Hi guys, in this video we're going to be covering some of the basics about the ukulele. We're going to be talking about purchasing one, how do you tune it, how do you play chords, and even some basic tips and techniques so you can get started playing this awesome instrument. Check it out. So we have Miss Maria on vocals and Mr. Juan and that was the song Lava from Pixar's, uh, I guess the, the probably the movie is called Lava. 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 Yeah. So and it's a pretty song, it's a song played uh, mostly, I think I think it's with two ukuleles, right? A recording? Something like that. One or two, <laughs> I don't know. So it's, it's a really pretty song, it's an easy song. I want to thank Miss Maria for being a part of this uh, introduction for To The Life. So yes. she actually has to go, so she was going to join us for this part. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. But we're going to be talking today a little bit about the ukulele and a little bit about the process of uh, purchasing one, which one should you get, a little bit of like basic techniques. So how, one, how long have you had yours? I've had mine for like three years, three, four years, I would say. Yeah. So and this one actually is the one that we use for the school to, to be able to teach ukulele. Now one of the first things that uh, we would like to, to talk to you guys about is purchasing one because when I started doing some research for the schools to be able to like purchase some ukuleles, it was a little bit more confusing than I thought. Mm -hmm. So now how many, how many sizes do you guys think? And by the way, if you guys want to definitely let us know questions, suggestions, uh, we want to answer questions. But uh, one of the things that we found out, you know, when I started doing the research is there's four sizes. So what are the four sizes? We have what? Baritone. Baritone. Tenor. Uh-huh. Alto. Or concert. Concert. God. And soprano. And soprano. Mm -hmm. So it's similar than the sax, saxophone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's, we're talking about different sizes. Now one of the things, and the other day I was doing research, apparently it's measured from here. So it's measured from the nut to the, the mm -hmm. cut of the body, and that's how you know what size your ukulele is. One of the things that we recommend directly out of the four sizes, both of these are tenors. tenors. Mm -hmm. tenors. And one of the things that for us is important that you guys know is that soprano tends to be too little. Have you played Very, a soprano yes. before? Yeah, and your fingers feel like they're all scrunched up. Yeah, so the soprano, the soprano is almost, I would say, like a toy. Like it, to me, yeah. it feels like a toy. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's very small it's for a different sound you would yeah. say but and it sounds very how like hawaiian yeah it's <laughs> like the... really really like almost like island type of sound one thing that we like about this one which is be the third size so this one is the tenor it has a fuller sound and one thing that i that i think is the this is a perfect instrument to take to the beach to play by yourself yeah. you know it's, it's an instrument that you're gonna you guys are gonna be using in the context of, of accompanying a singer probably with nothing else. Mm -hmm. So I think this one has like a good, clear, you know, nice tone mm -hmm. before you get into the next one, which is the baritone. And the baritone almost sounds like a guitar that is yeah. missing strings. And the baritone is a different tuning too. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and that that's a really good point in terms of tuning. We're gonna try to cover a little bit of like tuning, but one thing that we want you guys to know is like when the tuning changes, then some of the sheet music would not work. Yeah. So if you're buying sheet music for soprano, uh, concert, and tenor, those three have the same tuning, right? Mm -hmm. So all the songs are gonna apply, all the methods are gonna apply. When you have a baritone, you may have to buy purchase a different method. So how much money do you think they should be spending? Because uh, we know there's some ukuleles out there for 30 bucks, 30 40 bucks, 30, 40, yeah. You can find some in Amazon that are kind of like colorful. But how? What would you say is the minimum? I would say at least a hundred, about a hundred to get a good one that's gonna last. Uh, usually the ones are like thirty, forty. You take it out to the beach one time and it's gonna get destroyed. It won't last long. Yeah. And there we we actually had one of the students here had one of those. Part of the thing is is it's hard to play because the action is very very far out from the wood, so it's it's a harder instrument mm -hmm. to play. We would say a hundred bucks. This one is actually uh, one that is a hundred dollars. The brand I think is Loa, Lo, Lohanu, Lohanu, and we'll try to put a link in the description of the video when you guys see this in the replay on YouTube. And we definitely recommend this one because it's a great package. It comes with a strap with a, an extra set of strings with picks, with a pick holder, and a case, nice. and a tuner. So for a hundred dollars, that's a really, really good deal. And one thing, and Mr. Juan doesn't have a strap. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really, really believe like passionately about is that for younger students, 
you guys need to get one with a strap because and let's talk a bit a little bit about how you hold a ukulele if it doesn't have a strap yeah. well if it doesn't have a strap if you're sitting I would definitely it will go on your right leg mm -hmm. yeah, and I would face it actually up like this so your right arm is kind of holding in a way and just the position that you would be in right there okay for the most part uh, some students hold it like this like a guitar it, you could definitely do that. Sometimes it'll make it a little harder because you have to reach it's, down. And it's going to be to too up. low. Exactly. Now, one of the things, some people play it by almost like hugging it. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that when you're young, like I guess you need the strength not only to hold it, but to play it. Mm -hmm. So I think as, well, as we get older, it's, it's easier to do that. But I think for younger students, if you guys can get a strap, they even sell neck straps. Yep, mine. And, and we have tried that, and I think that's it's, a good suggestion. It's a little, as well. it's a little tougher. Uh, with mine, when I'm standing, I probably use a neck. I have a neck, a neck strap. Uh, it could get tricky because it doesn't hold it 100. percent If you let go of it, it will fall. Yeah, so. yeah. It, but but what it does is it it puts a little bit of the energy on, onto the strap, so you can mm -hmm. also put some of the energy on on playing. Because one of the things you don't want to be playing an instrument that you're trying to keep from falling because it's, it's very distracting so awesome so I guess we covered those two things we covered the size and by the way this I think also do you have a case for yours yes did it come with a case no okay by separate super important this is a fragile instrument yes, right very this instrument you drop it a couple times you may break it so mm -hmm. having a good strap is important I think for students that are younger uh, they will probably uh, drop it. Yes. So much better if they have around. if it gets dropped with a case. So definitely look for ukuleles. Now, how much is it? By the way, and, and one interesting thing is this one is a hundred. That one is how much? About two fifty or three hundred. Okay. Now the difference, and this is an important thing to do, is you guys wanna if you wanna show them that side. This one has electronics. So this one is one that you can plug into a system. You can plug into. Uh, can amplify. Uh, yeah, you can. It can be amplified. So if you are performing with other instruments, you're performing with piano, with bass, with drums. You definitely need something like this mm -hmm. because this is also an instrument that if you try to put a microphone on it, it's gonna be really, really hard. Tough, yeah. And on on Mr. Juan's ukulele, you're playing, you're paying what maybe 150 bucks just for the system. Mm -hmm. exactly. So one of the things that for us is important to mention is the importance of staying with those that are not amplified. Mm -hmm. If you guys are not good doing gigs with them, now if you're jamming your house with some friends, this should be fine. The moment that you want to play with the band, you probably need the something like that because also putting a, a microphone may produce feedback and stuff that you don't really want yeah. in a show. So that I think pretty much covers uh, everything that we wanted to mention on the basics of purchasing one. Definitely let us know if you guys have any questions uh, about the process of playing against playing a ukulele. Let's talk about tuning. One thing that is incredibly important about tuning, which is and I wanted to, I brought my iPad to show you guys and hopefully it's working. Now what's the tuning? So, from top to bottom, that's how you want it or for which way? Yeah. Top to bottom. So the, the top one would be G. All right, make sure my is in tune as well. Now, the note that he's playing, if you guys can see, and I hope you can see here on the, on the iPad, I'll get a little closer, uh, it's this G. So that's G above middle C. So if you're gonna play it, uh, I guess tuning with the piano, that now that is the string that is on the I guess at the top. top. Now the next string is C C. So actually it goes down. So instead of being an instrument as the guitar that we just gonna go E and A and we keep going up. In this case you're starting on G, then going down, mm -hmm. then going to this E, and then going to an A. So if you play the notes on a piano, the strings are gonna be G C E A but it's almost like going around, which is something that is, we don't normally see that in other instruments. So I think it's, it's an important thing to know that the arrangement of the strings is somewhat different than yeah, I guess no, guitar. It's very different actually. And which also makes playing melodies yeah. pretty, I guess, More in particular mm -hmm. on the instrument. Now, can we talk about the first five notes? Talk to, talk to them about like, for example, like a lot of instruments you start with, the first five notes of a major scale, C, D, E, F, G. So where do so, we have C? So we have C uh, would be the, from bottom up would be a third string. Okay. All right. Uh, then you have the second fret, which would be D. Okay. Then you have the next string under it, open. So second string, open E. All right. And the first fret would be F. And the third fret would be G. Good. So for example, if we do, let's say, O to Joy. Let's see if I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> So. Now, if you guys play.
play guitar, you know that that in guitar, in basic guitar, it's going to be played on the first string, the first, first string. and second mm -hmm. string. So one of the things here that is, we, we change, and it's almost, I guess, a challenge, but at the same time, I think it's cool, you're playing a lot with the two middle strings mm -hmm. when you're playing melody lines. So at the beginning, if you're playing songs, like let's say, oh, Joy, Jingle Bells, uh, that kind of like thing, you're going to play it a lot in with those uh, two middle strings. Now, one thing, and we really like this, by the way, we recommend this instrument for anyone that is younger than seven, eight years old. Sometimes students that are young, they want to do guitar. Yeah. So if you have a five, a six year old, and they say, oh, I love the guitar, I really want to do guitar. It's interesting because as a school, we tried it, we have been in business for 11 years, and when we started, we did guitar lessons with four year olds. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's their one no, it's I, don't, that. No, I don't know about that <laughs> but it was it was really challenging for them and one thing is it's discouraging because if they do not know that it's it's just not the right time to do it it's better to wait on ukulele what four is four year old is still probably too young I think a five or six year old yeah. can actually play it and what would you say the difference is? Like well, why? definitely the, the tension in a guitar, the strings are a lot harder to press. Yeah. So for younger kids, they'll be like, it's too hard or it will hurt them too much that they'll end up quitting. Ukulele is a little bit, it's, uh, the tension is a little less, so you don't have to press as hard, so it's a little easier for younger kids. And the size, the size of the instrument is, is significantly mm -hmm. different, so their fingers can get a lot more around it, they can yeah. clear it, mm -hmm. plus the strings uh, are made out of nylon, nylon so. which also that's, a, all, I guess, a huge plus. Now, would you say, and let's talk a little bit about the mechanics, do you, do you normally play with your fingers, do you normally play with the pick? Uh, it really depends. Um, if I want to project a lot, I'll probably use a pick just because okay. it'll project a little more. But for the most part, I'll use my fingers. It's a nice, it's a nicer, more real sound, especially for ukulele. Okay, and let's talk about because a couple things that are very like if you play guitar, if you're one of our guitar players, when people say this about the ukulele, you're a little bit like what? One of the things is the basic strumming will be done with this finger. Mm -hmm. And it's not done over the sound hole. A lot of people think that you play it over the sound hole, which is not correct, nope. right? Mm -hmm. You play it almost in the intersection between the neck and the body. So it's, if you play a guitar there, it's gonna sound- Super thin. And obnoxious. Yeah. Thin and weird. It's gonna sound weird, it's gonna slack almost body. So in a guitar, you do play here. In a ukulele, you wanna do your strumming up there. And it's a lot of this first finger, which by the way, I think if you move, would you try to move that technique to guitar? The, no, not really. <laughs> no. And it's interesting <laughs> because it's, it's, an, it's an instrument that, as with a lot of instruments, you have to work with the, with the techniques that work well on it. When you move to another instrument, you have to be like, okay, I'm playing something different. I, you have to accommodate. So let's talk about one of the reasons that we love this for beginners. Let's play a C major chord. So a C major chord gets played with one finger. One finger. So just one finger fretting one note and you get a clear C major. Which I don't think, I don't even know, I don't, I don't play a lot of instruments. If there's any other instrument that is, there's an easier way to play C major than a ukulele. Probably no, not, so. right? I don't think so, not that I know of. <laughs> Piano, guitar, you know, like I think a lot of other instruments, this is gonna be the easiest. So let's talk about maybe, I don't know, two chords, three chords. So we yeah. got C. Good. Which one do you wanna go to? Uh, we can do F. We can do F. So F is two fingers, uh, one on fret one on string two, and one on on fret two on string four. four. So if you're playing, for example, F, sorry, C, and then F. These patterns are fairly easy to do for a beginner. And the thing, it kind of like sounds cool. It's almost like a relaxing type of tone. So with one finger, with two fingers, you literally get to play chords yes. right off the start, mm -hmm. sometimes in your first class. That again, doesn't happen in guitar. In guitar, it's gonna be... Okay. For guitar, to switch chords is definitely a lot harder because you have to use about three to four fingers yes. at a time. Uh, for ukulele again, C is one, F is two, and A minor would be one. Two. A minor is one finger two. So, so, which also, well, again, let's show them like I guess the most complex chord that you're a beginner. 
G. <laughs> the G chord, which actually the G chord, for those of you guys that play guitar, it's a, a D chord. It's a D chord. Plays, I guess if you want to think of that, it's, it's not, but the position is very, very similar than a D chord uh, in uh, for guitar, but played on the ukulele. Now, definitely I think it's, it's very, very cool because also you can use a capo. So with one finger or two fingers, and actually Mr. Juan has a capo here, you put, let's put it like, I don't know, on two. I'm trying to play G. So you're trying to learn a song. Actually, it's a great tool for songwriting as well. So if you're trying to write your own songs, and you're like, let me see if this song can go half a step up. Now let's do C, C major. So C major would be, would be up here. Yeah. So now this with D. <laughs> one finger, we're in D major. So for you guys that love, you know, songwriting and that kind of like thing, it's it's a really really good tool. And for 100 bucks, 80 bucks. Yeah, a nice it's, beach instrument. It's, it's a nice <laughs> beach instrument. Also, it's good to travel. Uh, yeah. Or like when you get a, when you try try to travel with guitars, you know, airlines tend to give you a really hard time sometimes. This does classify as going as a personal item usually. I would say it's still an instrument, but it's still easy because <laughs> it doesn't take up that much space. So yeah, it's so, so it's, it's not, it's, guitars, when they see guitars, airlines tend to be like, no, 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 no like we're going to charge you more and you have to put it on the you know, check bag and all that. So I think that pretty much covers a little bit of what we trying to to talk. I don't know if we have any questions, maybe. <laughs> uh, and ukulele is cool because if you could learn four chords you could play so many songs oh of course super yeah. easy to. Which, which by the way that brings us up to the fact that the majority of music today is four chords, is four chords. <laughs> so there is tons and tons of music that you can go ahead and play with this so thank you guys for watching one thing we have a video in which we talk about purchasing a ukulele we are gonna we have already links on that video that's on our youtube channel so you guys can go over there and watch it and at the same time we're probably going to be posting direct uh, links on this so you guys can purchase it it's a great instrument i think even if you are a piano player even if you are a bass player a drummer yeah. it's a cool thing to be able to to play because i think as a musician you want to carry music with you yeah can we carry a drum set to the to the beach you could try. Have you ever bought, brought your drums to the beach? You need to do like 10 trips, but yeah, that would not take it. Have you, have you done it? No, I would not. Because we actually, we actually did it. We did, we brought our drums to, uh, to the beach for a music video. Oof. At four o'clock in the morning, oh. because it was like a sunrise. <laughs> okay, cool. So those are memories from the past. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you guys got some information out of this. We are the Hit Music Studio. We try to get you guys to play the fastest and the easiest way possible. There's tons of content out there that we believe we need to put some content out there for students that are young because for you guys, things are very specific and we want to help you, right? Yep. We want to make it the easiest that we can so you guys can avoid some of the pitfalls that we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so see you guys very soon. Take care.